Hello everybody, this is Lara at PureElliottWave.com with an analysis of copper for you today. Today's the last day that the uh, online course Learn Pure Elliott Wave is on sale, 40% off. I have to go out this afternoon and when I get back later in the afternoon I'll be changing it back to the regular price. So you've got a few hours if you're viewing this now and you want to purchase that at a special price. I did copper years ago and this was my wave and I didn't look at this, I was only looking at this, it was this month. My target was 3.206, the high ended up being 3.321, that's pretty good, and then we got a trend change. I'm going to redo this though, because this doesn't really fit. there's so much more price data now from when I last did it. This is all the data I've got from FXM, so this is what I have to work with. So I'm going to start my wave count down here. This low is 1.937 and this low is 1.971, it's above. So, so far, I think there's two counts to consider, either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or A, B, C. So, let's consider both and I'm going to give them an even probability and I'll work out what price point will tell us which is which. So the first one, it's just because it's just easier and it's the first one I grabbed, let's make this an incomplete impulse. So we'll have one here maybe, two here, 3.321, what's this high? Three point no. So this is the high, so that's one. I think we'll have three, and I think four might be some kind of expanded flat, and then five. And then also on the monthly, I'll just call it the second wave count. Why are you doing of wave. Oh, because I said make it empty. Okay. Oh, I had a... Oh, I, every now and then, people make the weirdest comment. They say that I'm just using automated software to do my Elliott Wave analysis. Um, why do people say that if they very obviously haven't actually viewed any of my analysis? This is not automated. This is all my own work. I find that slightly annoying. It's just so the opposite of what I'm doing here. None of this is automated. Okay, so I've got two wave counts at the monthly chart level. This video is going to be eight years long if I do all of the detail for all of them. So I'm just going to do a rough wave count here. That looks like a really good third wave. I don't know about the fifth wave though. I'd have to look at that at lower time what could the second wave be? I think this looks like a double zigzag. There's a zigzag here and a zigzag here. And this looks like a good strong third wave. I'm going to bring in MACD to assist with the wave count to indicate momentum. Third wave should have the strongest momentum. Yep. MACD shows that this third wave is stronger than this first wave, so that fits. And I think this might be an expanded flat for a fourth wave. That's a really common structure, and both A and B look like threes, as they must be. B moves beyond the start of A, as it should for an expanded flat. They both subdivide as three wave structures. And the minimum requirement for a B wave within a flat is 90% the length of the A wave. If your B wave is less than that and your A wave is subdividing as a 3, your Elliott wave count is invalid. It break, breaks an Elliott wave rule. And I have not written, rewritten any of the rules from Frost and Prechter. My own book, Pure Elliott Wave, absolutely exactly follows the same rules in Frost and Prechter. I'm going to bring my invalidation point in here. This is the price point that differentiates the two wave counts. And it is 3.321. This is at a monthly chart level, so I know that invalidation point is a long way away, but this is the bigger picture. And then I think we can possibly, let's just bring this five down, I think we can probably calculate a target for intermediate wave C as well. Based on A, just expand this out so I can see how long A is. 
I was going to do an update for you yesterday, but it was Sunday, and I went surfing. I thought that was a good life choice, but I'm here now. So A times 1.618. So if C reaches 1.618, the length of A, a reasonable target would be 3.54, rounded up to two decimal places. And that's above the invalidation point, so the count would remain valid. And let's bring a channel in. And I've got this on a semi-log scale, as you have to, for higher time frames. You can use an arithmetic scale on a lower time frame, like daily. Here's an Elliott channel. So the fourth wave may find its support midway in the channel. So let's put the middle line. Mm, no, let's, okay, let's put this where the target would be. 3.54 close enough so if it reaches that target it's going to end below the midline okay that's okay it doesn't have to find support there I was just wondering if that would look right it doesn't look right so that's my first wave count at the monthly chart level let's look at the second one well, the biggest problem I see with this is if this is an A, B, C, then C doesn't is not going to look like a five wave structure. I don't know if that's going to be a decent wave count, to be honest. From this low to this high, you would have to label this probably one, two, three, maybe four, some kind of triangle, five. You can't have four ending here because then five looks like a three wave structure, not a five wave structure. I think maybe I'm going to leave it at this, actually. Let's just do the daily from this. Oh, intermediate A doesn't look like a uh, zigzag, looks like a... I don't know, it looks like a double zigzag. Because from here to here, that doesn't look like a five, that looks like a three. It's, um, it's somewhat academic because it's very obviously over and it's very obviously a corrective structure whether it be a single or double zigzag so I normally I you know to I would have a look at that in more detail but I'm just gonna leave no labels on it I want to focus on intermediate C I think maybe intermediate B could also be a double zigzag could be yeah again it's academic at this point but interesting. I want to focus on the structure of intermediate C because that's the important bit here and it's not over. And it needs to be a five wave motive structure. Is the third wave over? Okay. Um, let's go to expand this out more. I wonder if this first wave is a leading diagonal. Let's have a look at that. The wavelengths don't work. Three is the longest out of one, three, and five. All the other wavelengths work. And I keep saying I've long suspected that the only Elliott wave rule from Frost and Prechter I would consider rewriting would be sometimes within diagonals, leading, uh, contracting, and expanding, the third wave can be the longest out of one, three, and five, so long as all the other rules are met. But I'm not prepared to rewrite that rule. I don't know if I have hourly data for this, and I don't know how much time I'd want to spend on checking the subdivisions of one and then two. Either way, I would have two ending here. And I think B is some kind of combination. Yeah, I think maybe a double combination. And minor three actually could be over I think this is a good looking third wave momentum is increasing to the downside fifth waves to end third wave impulses one degree higher for commodities can be particularly strong so I've got no problem with MACD showing stronger momentum for my new to five than it did for my new to three that's typical behavior of commodities I'm used to that from analyzing gold on a daily basis almost or only once a week now thank goodness but on a daily basis for a long time previously 
I wonder if three ended here and four is some kind of expanded flat. That would be a good alternation with the zigzag of minor two. I'm just checking the length of minute B to A. It's 1.66. It's longer than the normal length of a B wave, or the most common length, so not really normal, but most common length of B in relation to A is up to 1.38, but it's within an allowable guideline of up to two. That's perfectly acceptable. Not a great looking channel, but that's an Elliott channel. I'm going to bring my invalidation point in. If this wave count is correct, then a consolidational bounce should not move above 4.469. So that's the short term invalidation point for this wave count. And this is what I would expect a bounce or consolidation. So into, uh, minor 4 could complete as a single expanded flat. When it's over though, I'd consider the proportion between minor waves 4 and 2. And if it's quite quick, if it finishes quickly, then I would certainly consider the possibility it could take longer. It could continue further as a triangle or a double flat or a double combination. And all of all of those, the double combination would be the most likely structure. They're actually pretty common. Okay, so that's my wave count for copper. I think we're going to see a consolidation or a bounce to relieve extreme conditions before the downward trend continues to a target of 3.54, but I do not expect it should move below 3.321, and when the downward trend has completed, I will expect a major trend change and a bull market to resume for copper. Let's have a look and see if the classic analysis picture supports that view. This is the monthly chart. I'm looking at as much decent amount of data here. Nice double bottom here for copper. A nice bullish run. At the end though, it's got a decline in volume. But here, it did have some support for higher. Currently, resistance about 4.4, support about 3.8. At this high here, between closing prices, but I'm just drawing lines across the highs, it's more visually intuitive. There is bearish divergence and a failure swim in this last major high for copper. This is not actually correctly technically bearish engulfing candlestick pattern because it's closed below the open of the prior candlestick. But the close of this monthly candlestick here is very bearish. It's closed reasonably below the open of the prior month. So not a bearish reversal pattern, but still a bearish candlestick. On balance volume failed to make a final high with price up here, so there's bearish divergence here as well. It's in a range, there's no signal. ADX reached extreme, but not very extreme for that upward trend. It's now declining, no clear trend at the monthly chart level. And ATR increased as price moved higher, there was strength in that upward movement. So things got really extreme and there was bearish divergence here. That suggests a major trend change, not just a couple of months of downward movement, but some more. That fits the Elliott wave count. I don't believe it. I have to re-record my weekly and daily charts because technology is failing me today. And it just didn't record all that work I did. So I'll zip through this kind of quickly because I'm just a little bit tired of doing it a second time. At the weekly chart level, we can see this bearish divergence between price and RSI, and RSI is back in neutral territory. ADX was indicating an upward trend here after some consolidation, but now it's declining, indicating no clear trend. However, this week or one week ago, very, very recently, the negative DX line has crossed above the positive, indicating a potential trend change to down but no clear trend yet at this time frame. This is based on a 14 week average. It is a lagging indicator. And so Stochastics is entering oversold. No clear trend. Price is at support about 4.1. Let's expect a bounce there. We need to see a breakout above resistance or below support for confidence in the direction of the next trend at the weekly chart level. Volume is pushing price lower, which suggests a downward breakout is more likely than upward, which supports the Elliott wave count. And on balance, volume gives us a bearish signal. 
That could be resolved though, it gave the bearish signal back here that's been followed by three weeks of downward movement now. But it could be followed by more. ATR has flattened off as price moves sideways. Okay, that's the weekly chart level. The daily chart, we're going to really focus in on this latest movement from here to here especially. I'm not noticing a lot of really good looking candlestick patterns on copper. This is not correctly technically a bearish engulfing pattern. A bearish engulfing pattern, the real body of the engulfing candlestick should, as the name implies, fully engulf the real body of the prior candlestick and the open here is a little bit below the close, so there's this gap. The close of this candlestick is quite bearish though, it has closed reasonably below the prior candlestick. So the close is bearish, so this is quite bearish coming after upward movement. There's not a perfect but a decent looking morning doji star, now I know I use Steve Neeson as my go-to classic for my instructions on how to read candlestick patterns, he's the original so I like to go back to the source. And the descriptions for a star candlestick says that the open of this should be above the real body of the prior candlestick or the doji, the star or the doji. But then he's got a few examples and charts that he refers to where it isn't actually perfect like that, it looks more like this. So I'm going to be, say that this is acceptable because Neeson has accepted it in his work in that book. Here though we do have a nice bearish engulfing candlestick pattern after some upward and then sideways movement and we've got a downward breakout below what was support at 4.45 and then again at 4.3. After some downward movement we're now seeing a bullish candlestick pattern, this is a piercing pattern, it opens below the close of the prior candlestick and the real body closes well within the real body of the prior candlestick at least half and this has achieved that and more but it does not have support from volume, so this is a little suspicious. What conditions is this candlestick appearing in? The downward trend is extreme, but not very extreme, and RSI reached oversold, but no bullish divergence. Given extreme conditions and a bullish candlestick pattern, I would expect some reasonable reaction, either a bounce or a consolidation from that. I wouldn't I would be suspicious that this is indicating a 180 degree trend change though because it lacks support from volume and that's really important for a bullish candlestick pattern. The moving average situation is leaning bearish but somewhat inconclusive because the midterm, I use a Fibonacci 55, I should probably change that to 50, it's a bit of an affectation isn't it, but a 55 day moving average is above the 200 day moving average. They're all negatively sloped and prices below all three so definitely leaning bearish but still inconclusive, not clearly bearish. Stochastics is oversold but in a trending market this can remain so for quite a while while price moves a considerable distance as it already has and ATR is increasing as price falls. There is strength in this downward movement so I would expect a bounce or consolidation before the downward trend resumes which fits the Elliott Wave count quite neatly. Okay that's all from me with this copper analysis for you today. I will be back in a few hours to change that special price on the Loon Pure Elliott Wave online course so if you want to pick that up at a really good price you've got a few hours. Thank you so much for watching, thank you as always so much for your support, I appreciate everyone who subscribes to the YouTube channel and everyone who comments and especially I certainly appreciate all of my members in my membership at pureelliottwave.com. Thank you.